Hi everyone, Alexa Dunn here, and today I am back to talk about critique partners and specifically how to find them and a few tips slash best practices on working with them or really starting your CP relationships. Because as I mentioned in my what is a critique partner and why do you need them video, Oh gosh, a good CP is not easy to find. Essentially, finding a good CP is a lot like dating or making friends once you are an adult. It is a bit of trial and error. It's all about finding the right fit for your personality and also in this case, your writing style and the books that you write. And you have all of my sympathies because it is so hard. And in fact, I've, I've been asked this question so many times over the many years. Oh, how did you find your critique partners? How do you find critique partners? You know, I've, I've tried to find critique partners and it hasn't gone well. And so I formulated some of my best tips over the years, but I have to admit that my advice is imperfect in the sense that I think anyone's advice on finding great critique partners is always going to be a little imperfect because a little bit of it is luck and timing and happenstance, meaning I had resources at my disposal to find critique partners in 2013, which is when I finally found my holy grail, like core critique partners that are no longer available. So it's always kind of the trial and error of what are the resources now and giving it a try and hoping for the best. So to that end, I'm going to give you resources that are as current as I could manage them at the time that I am filming this video. So these are going to be current as of say Q1 2018 uh, marketing speak. So, you know, the early part of 2018. And now just another little disclaimer. Um, I also mentioned this in the What Are Critique Partners video, and that is that it is really, really critical to find critique partners who are on your level, so to speak. And level means a lot of different things. I'll try to cliff notes it here. Level means that you are on a similar writing level. So whether you are kind of new, intermediate, or advanced, you wanna find someone who's kind of in a similar place as you in terms of the storytelling crafts, sophistication of the writing, grammar, usage, and so on. Level also means ambitions and goals. You want to find writers who are heading in a similar direction. So meaning if you are pursuing traditional publishing and you don't have an agent, but you want to be querying in the next year, you want to find writers who are more or less at a similar place and not just that they want to query in that space of time, but that they are will be ready to query in that space of time. Or if you already have an agent, because people who already have agents or even already have book deals need to find critique partners too. You want to look for people who have reached certain benchmarks, whose prose is at a certain level, and who, again, whose ambitions match yours. You also want to find people who write in a similar genre and know the genre as well as you should know the genre. Critique partners who aren't well read and don't know the market slash genre well aren't honestly going to be that useful. You're going to find you get a lot of weird or tone deaf feedback from people who are not well versed in what you were writing. That said, I will say there is value in sometimes matching with a critique partner who is either one level below, so to speak, or above you in the sense that there is a lot of value. Let's say you're the person who's a, t a level b above. You've maybe learned a little bit more, or maybe you've you know been through the querying gauntlet before. Maybe you didn't find an agent, but you've been through it. And there's real value in then offering advice and tips and tricks to the critique partner and essentially pulling them up with you. It's really, really nice growing with someone in that way. But I will say if there are too many tiers between you and your critique partner, at a certain point, that's not quite a CP relationship. It's more like mentorship and mentorship is a little bit different. Typically in a mentorship relationship, the mentee um, has less to offer the mentor in terms of improving the mentor from a craft or industry level. But of course, mentors get a lot out of mentoring relationships. But I do think there's a bit of a distinction between being reciprocal and equivalent CPs and a mentor-mentee relationship. 
Okay, now for some specific resources that I recommend that you check out and see if they might work for you. The first one is a hashtag on Twitter. It's hashtag CPMatch. I have seen this happen semi-regularly for at, le at least the last two years, so I have to assume it's going to continue happening. So look for that hashtag. I've seen it happen as a bi-annual event, um, semi-annual event. I've seen it happen approximately every six months, so you can look for that hashtag. Another great resource is one that I'm actually involved in, and that is the uh, YA Writers subreddit. So that's going to be reddit.com slash r slash YA Writers. I am a moderator of that subreddit, and we do regular CP matching events. You also don't have to wait for an event. You are always free to post a thread on the subreddit seeking a critique partner. You just put a little bit about your book and what you're looking for and see if you can find a match. But definitely look for the official formal CP matching events. We should have one coming up in the next four to six weeks because it's a new year, so we'll be doing a CP matching thread really, really soon. Similarly, you can try other subreddits for writing. There is our writing, our pub tips, and our fantasy are three that come to mind. Though um, pub tips, uh, you're most likely to find a critique partner there through um, posting your query or seeing other people's queries. Our writing is a bit of a mess. It isn't my favorite sub for finding kind of for easily finding equitable CP relationships, but there are definitely some gem users on there and you never know. And then our fantasy has a, has a lot of great resources for writers, so if you are a fantasy writer, that is definitely a place to check out. Next are forums on some popular writing websites. I would say that these are hit or miss. The good thing is, is they've been around forever, so they're definitely well known enough that a lot of people use them. But in the past, when I did try these forums, it was definitely hit or miss re, you know, finding that fit because the fit is the hardest part. But I do think these places are worth checking out. In general, they're good places to post your query for feedback. And those are the Absolute Write forums, the QueryTracker.net forums, and the Agent Query Connect forums. And don't worry, I'm going to be linking everything down below in the description box so you can catch links to all of these things, no need to take notes or anything. Next is something that was recommended to me by a friend. A friend of mine has used this to find critique partners and so I like offering it as a resource to people and it is a website called Ladies Who Critique. So it's exactly what it sounds like. It is a website for women who are writing fiction to find critique partners. And so, you know, my friend has definitely had success finding some why critique partners there, so it is worth checking out. Next is an evolution of an older resource. Uh, so Maggie Stiefvater started out with a very, very popular annual blog event on her website, on her blog, which was matching Maggie fans who were writers for critique partners. And it was really, really popular, but it only happened once a year. And Maggie Stiefvater evolved that into a Google group. So it is a Google group where you can find critique partners. And then a timely and topical recommendation. I highly, highly recommend participating in Write On Con. It is happening this year from February 9th to 11th, and it is a 100% online writers conference for kidlet. It is for middle grade and YA. I'm actually participating as like a guest this year, which is super exciting because it wasn't that long ago I was an ickle participant in Write on Con myself. I have been attending Write on Con since 2012, 2013. But one great thing about Write on Con, and you don't have to pay to register to do this, is they have 100% free forums that are up during Write on Con. They are critique forums where people post their first pages and their queries for feedback, but this is a great place to connect with writers who are basically at the querying stage. So if that is the stage that you are at, you can definitely find some like-minded writers on the Write On Con forums. Now, this kind of ties into one of my, my hot tips. In a lot of these cases, with these resources, they are obviously, they exist with the sole purpose of finding critique partners. You'll find threads and sub forums where if you're posting there, people know that you're looking for a critique partner. People will go there looking for people looking for critique partners. But something like the Write On Con forums, you're gonna have to do something that is called cold, it's like cold contacting, but it is actually one of my favorite tips for finding a critique partner. 
and that is putting yourself out there a bit. And I know that's really, really hard. This is the equivalent of basically, you know, walking up to someone in your college class or, you know, saying hello to the to the friendly looking person that you see in the coffee shop when you go there to write and basically introducing yourself and seeing if they want to be your friend. Or I guess it's like, I don't know, chatting up someone at a bar, but let's use the friendship analogy because these are essentially friendships. I know it's scary, but cold contacting people who usually you, this happens when they've posted a query or even an online pitch in the case of Twitter contests, that sounds really awesome to you. It is okay, though tread carefully, and I confess it is scary, but it, you can basically cold contact them, reach out the, to them and say, hey, I read your query, it sounds really, really awesome. If you're looking for a critique partner, I would totally be up for that. And then you would say, I have this book, you know, I write this, you know, elevator pitch it, like, let me know. Leave it open-ended, leave it very kind of friendly and no strings attached so that they don't feel pressured or weirded out. But I'll tell you, in 60% of cases, I've scored critique partners out of this strategy. I have done it on Reddit when people posted queries for critique and I went, your query is amazing, I desperately want to read this, do you need a CP? Worked. I have done this on Twitter when I saw people um, do Twitter pitch contests and I sent them a DM. In many cases, we were mutual follows, by the way. It's not like, I don't randomly contact people all the time, but I'd be like, your pitch is amazing. Like, if you need a critique partner, like, totally hit me up. That has worked for me a good amount of the time. And also, you can do this cold contacting that's kind of more like warm. So if you are in um, a writer's group with other people, so there are a lot of writer support groups. So this might come into play, say, if you're part of the Pitch Wars community or the Author Mentor Match community, or if uh, you, are, you get an agent and you're part of an agented writer's group. These are what I would call kind of warm situations. And so that's when you reach out to someone who's in the same community that you are and you say, your stuff sounds great. Like I, I'm totally looking for critique partner. If you are as well, I totally love to exchange manuscripts and it can be the start of a beautiful friendship. This is basically how I became writer friends with Ellie Blake. We were in an agented writers group. I just sent her a private email. I said, your book sounds amazing. If you need a critique partner, I'm here for you. And we haven't looked back. She is one of my core critique partners and I adore her. And you know, I had to put myself out there and it was scary, but it totally worked. And so that's kind of, the big message that I want to give here, there are resources that kind of remove a little bit of the anxiety, as I mentioned, because they exist solely for the purpose of creating critique partner matchups. But I have actually found often that those very resources can be more hit or miss. And so my kind of cold slash warm contacting of seeking out projects that genuinely sound exciting to me. And then of course, you know, not just offering up my services, but putting them at ease by saying, you know, this is what I write, these, you know, I am, I'm seeking traditional publication, I'm querying agents, so that of course they, they, they could make those evaluations of, is this person on my level, has led to some beautiful relationships. Now, the next part is kind of the best practices. Once you've made that initial connection of, okay, let's try this out. And that is the disclaimer that there is going to be some trial and error and it's not always going to work out and I know it's easier said than done, but don't get too frustrated if it's not a perfect match on the first try. So in order to kind of grease the wheels and make it a bit easier, so I do recommend always exchanging some sample chapters. So you know, even with those cold or warm contacts where you're saying, oh, I'd love to read your book always start out with the equivalent of a partial. So what you would send to an agent, typically a partial is like 50 pages. This is to your benefit and their benefit. Uh, it can also just be the first chapter, whatever works for you. So you exchange those chapters, maybe share a synopsis or a query if you haven't seen it already, so that both of you are on the same page of, okay, this is the pitch for the story, these are the samples so I can get a sense of their writing. And then you want to be very, very clear, both when you reach out initially um, on the CP specific matching resources with cold warm contacting, I wouldn't discuss the nitty gritty until they agree. But you want to let them know what you're looking for, let them know what you can offer, 
and then ask them what they want from you. So that is to say, are you looking just for big picture feedback? Are you looking to see if a specific thing is working? Do you want to say like, I just want to see um, if my opening pages are working, tell me your gut reaction to them. It could be um, that you do want someone who's more detail oriented. You want someone who will help you um, with line editing or copy editing and not everyone is into that. So that's a very important thing to specify but also just how honest you want the person to be. This is actually probably the most critical thing that you need to express to them and you need to explicitly ask them to express to you. Do you want brutal honesty? Do you want constructive criticism? And that comes with a little asterisk. Or do you just want positive feedback? Now, if you've seen my What Are Critique Partner videos, you know how I feel about cheerleader feedback. That's what only positive feedback is. I think it absolutely has its place. I think everyone should have a great cheerleader on their team, but I don't think that cheerleading feedback is the most useful as your sole critique partner relationship. So I just caution you that when you're seeking out, especially your first critique partner relationship, I just don't personally advise looking only for positive feedback because I'd say the average writer who is looking for that, you know, really deep and substantive critique partner relationship isn't looking for a cheerleader. So that can be mismatch number one. If all you want is someone to blow steam up your butt about your book, you, you might have trouble finding that that core great critique partner if you're not open to any criticism whatsoever. So constructive criticism comes with an asterisk. So does brutal honesty, to be honest, because people have different definitions of this. Um, don't ask for brutal honesty unless you mean it, because some people will take that to mean, all right, they want me to rip this apart. Let's do this. And then it crushes your soul. So honestly, the safest thing to do is is to ask for constructive criticism. But you can be specific. You can say, uh, you can ask for a compliment sandwich, which is when you start with the things that you love about something, you put in the middle some of the issues, and then you end it with, but I loved it. You can request that. Um, you can also say, you know, you can say, I'd like to know questions that you had um, or anything that confused you, but I don't need solutions, so to speak. In general, asking someone what questions they have while you read your book is a fantastic way to get a sense of what is confusing or not working without having someone trying to basically shadow direct your book. So if you don't want someone to, you know, tell you what to do, so to speak, just asking them to give you questions is a really, really good way to get feedback. So that was really long and rambly, but the point is lay this out ahead of time in your email, what you are looking for, what you are willing to do, what you're good at, like tell them, uh, my strength is asking questions. Like tell them that is what you're really, really good at and that you, you are not going to line edit their manuscript. And so if what they want is for you to line edit in a word document and you are not going to do that, it sets realistic expectations. And so do those sample chapters and agree on a deadline. Say, okay, great. Let's get these back to each other in two weeks. I generally don't recommend dragging it out on samples um, because it can drag forever. And then go from there. Sometimes it'll be a good fit. The early notes you get back from them, they're exactly what you're looking for. You liked their work. They seem to like what you sent them. And so you move forward with a full manuscript. But honestly, sometimes it goes spectacularly wrong. Like you get notes back and they're really mean, or you get notes back and they clearly do not understand the book at all, or you get notes back and they just don't help you, or vice versa. You can send notes to them and you will never ever hear from them again. I have definitely had this happen and I don't think I mean, but this is what I mean when people have very different definitions of brutal honesty, but also constructive criticism. I have been asked for constructive criticism and I've given it and then the person was so butthurt they never wrote back to me again. It happens to all of us. So I just want to caution, you know, caution you. It's okay. It happens to all of us. Now, if you don't click with their sample, or even if you don't click with their whole book, which I'll put a pin in and come back to, if you don't click with their sample, politely bow out of the relationship. Send them the notes that you promised them on that partial and say, be honest, you know, I'm not sure if this is the right fit for me for, you know, long-term uh, partnership, but, you know, thank you so much and I wish you the best. 
Now, if you end up reading in a whole manuscript for someone and you realize once you're deeper into it that, oh God, why did you sign up for this? Just do what you promised to do, give the notes on the book, and then do the same thing, like send it back to them and say, you know, it was so good working with you. I, I, you could, you could white lie a little. You could say, I don't know if I'm going to have time to, to, you know, work on other manuscripts with you going forward, or I don't have anything else to give you. So, you know, I wish you the best. I know this is really, really awkward, but don't chain yourself to a critique partner relationship that you are not happy with. And now another thing that you might experience is the hit and run where you give someone feedback and then you never hear from them again. They never reciprocate and give you the feedback that they promised. It happens and it's something where you just kind of have to chalk it up to experience. Finding critique partners is definitely a learning curve and there's going to be a bit of trial and error, but if you're willing to put yourself out there and you give it the good old try, eventually you will find a few people that you click with and can work really, really well with and form beautiful friendships. And just a little last disclaimer, re not clicking with notes. I will say that sometimes your first reaction to critical feedback, constructive criticism might be, oh, they don't get me. They don't get the book. Oh, how could they? What a jerk. And I do caution you to take a deep breath. Don't completely write them off immediately. And, um, think like, Think about the feedback, give it a little time to rest, and then go back and look at it. Sometimes someone who pushes us more than we were expecting, or more than we'd like, does actually end up being a really, really good fit. This is kind of a, again, a trial and error process of learning to deal with criticism and figuring out the line between someone who's a really, really bad fit and someone who might challenge you and help you grow as a writer and produce a better book. So those are my, you know, resources at the moment, some places you can find critique partners and some etiquette slash best practices of how to approach people and, you know, work with them exchanging those first few chapters. I hope this was helpful. I'm going to be doing additional videos because there are additional aspects to working with critique partners and this doesn't even cover revision, which is what you do after you get notes from a critique partner. I've got my introduction to revision video coming up for you very, very soon. I'm also going going to do a whole video just on evaluating critical feedback. This will help you kind of distinguish between the good critical feedback and the bad critical feedback so that you can make better decisions when it comes to critique partners and forge deeper and better relationships. Drop any questions or comments down below. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. It lets me know what kind of content you guys like and want to see. Subscribe to the channel if you are interested. I post new videos two to three times a week all about writing and craft and the industry, YA, and pursuing traditional publishing. Thank you so much for watching everyone, and as always, happy writing and good luck finding great critique partners.